Hello crafters, I'm Jan B and I'm an independent Stamping Up demonstrator. Today I'd like to show you how I created this pretty um, wedding favour box. Um, I've done this one in Blushing Bride, I've also made one in Soft Sky, which is that one. So I'm going to start by telling you the card pieces that you're going to need. The box which actually measures 3 by 3 by 3 inches which is 7.6 by 7.6 by 7.6 centimeters so it's a really lovely size and um, the box and the acetate sleeve come in our pack of white gift boxes this is a pack of eight so you get eight flat pack boxes and eight of the acetate sleeves so you're going to need one of these you're also going to need a scrap of paper. I'm just bringing this over um, to show you size. This is just an ordinary sheet of, sheet of uh, cardstock. Um, but you need a sheet that's um, A4 if you're UK, um, a letter size if you're US, and I'm not sure what size you use in South Pacific, um, but whichever one, the sheet will be fine. What you need to do is you need to cut yourself a piece of scrap paper that measures a tad under five and seven eighths inches by nine inches long, like that there, okay. And these two pieces that you cut off from here, like that one and that one, you need those as well, okay. So hold on to all three pieces. I'll move that out of the way. That was just try and make it a bit easier so that you could see rather than having white going on white so you need those and then you also need um, some vanilla very vanilla cardstock I think you probably need about um, one complete sheet but if you've got scraps this is a great way of using those up okay so approximately a complete sheet this is half a sheet but a complete sheet you will also need a strip of very, very vanilla, which measures 12 inches by 3.5 inches, which is 30.6 30 centimetres by 9 centimetres. Um, you can do this by using a sheet of A4. Um, I will show you when we get to the um, appropriate bit what difference it makes. Um, you could use the letter size as well but that is going to mean that you finish up with cutting through the lacy design but again I will say um, explain what's going to happen as I get to that stage if you use the different sizes a 12 inch length is much much the better size to use um, but you can get around it using uh, the standard sizes you will also need a small piece of very vanilla that measures one inch by two and three quarter inches which is 2.5 by seven centimeters if you're using a sheet of a4 this would need to be one and a half inches by two and three quarter inches which is 3.8 by seven centimeters and if you're using the us size this would need to be two inches by two and three quarter inches which would be five centimeters by seven centimeters okay all will become clear when we get to that stage so first of all we're going to color our box I have already done my box um, but I want to show you how I do it now bring in your scrap paper I'm going to use that to actually work on now with your nine by tad short of five and seven eighths you need to feed it into your box and it's easier if you do it from this end okay so just pop that in there and the reason I do this is because if you roller over all of this you'll get ink onto that bit which is going to go onto the inside of the box you'd get ink there and there which would be going inside the box and it wouldn't look very nice at all so if we cover it up like this you will find that you still have a gap here and here 
um, and the gap on that one doesn't show till we get over to the other side. So what I do is I take one of these other scraps that we have, I use my snail and I just put a little bit on one side and then I slide that in under there, make sure it goes up, no, it won't stick down just yet, make sure it goes right up to the edge there and there, that's it. Okay, so that's going to hold that into place. And for the other one, if you turn it over, you can see a gap here and a bit of a gap there. So we want to protect that as well. So a bit of nail onto that and then slide that in under there and take it right to the edge. Okay, so we're only going to get ink onto the actual box now. Nothing's going to go onto the inside. I've been using my uh, sponge brayer. This is one of the new items that's in the catalogue. Um, these are on page 180 in the annual catalogue if you haven't noticed them. They're sitting down in the corner and I'm using uh, Blushing Bride ink. If I move this over so that you can see how I'm doing this. When you roll your brayer in ink it's always roll, lift, roll, lift, roll, lift. Don't just go like that because you'll only get ink onto that particular bit. It won't go all the way round. Okay, so it's always roll, lift, roll, lift, roll, lift. Sounds like rawhide, rawhide, rawhide. Rawhide, doesn't it? <laughs> Showing my age, I know. Um, never mind. Right, okay, so what we do, ink up the brayer and then just roll. Okay, roll, lift, roll, lift, roll, lift. And just keep going over until you've got the depth of the colour you like. I did find the pink goes on a lot easier than the soft sky, um, but these are the only two colours I've tried this with. Um, and also, once this is done, you will need to leave it a little while to dry. Okay, so you just carry on going like that. I'm not going to do all of this because I have got one that I did earlier. Once you've done that side, turn it over and start on this side. I have to say, when I first saw these brayers, I really wasn't impressed and I didn't really see how they could be doing anything because everything was so pale. I mean, considering this is the third box I've done, this is still very light. And apparently these just wash, wash out um, because I'm still using the same colour. I haven't worried about washing it just yet. But there we go. Okay, so that all you need to do, just colour it up and put it to one side to dry. If you're like me and just a tad impatient, um, you can wipe it dry with a piece of kitchen towel. Obviously that will take some of the colour off, but um, it doesn't take much. This is one, when I did this one, um, I took the um, kitchen towel to this and wiped this one dry and it's still very nice and pink. Okay, so it doesn't do too much damage if you, if you like me, a little bit impatient. Right, okay, so we've done that bit. Next bit we're going to do is um, we're going to do the die cutting. Um, I'm going to show you, first of all, this flower. These flowers here are the top two layers that I have in this one. The bottom three layers are something different, which I really want to show you. Um, and obviously this bit round here, which is where I'm going to explain to you what happens with the, if you do A4, you do letter size. Right, so first of all, um, Seeing how I've got my precision base plate on here first, I'm going to do the lacy bit. And that comes from um, detailed floral thinlets. And I'm going to use this, but I'm not going to be using this to cut. I will show you why I'm not going to. So my first piece which is my 12 inch long piece make sure you can see all of this 
Now what I'm going to do with this, this is the larger one of the two. If you use the smaller one of the two, which you could, um, it just means that your lacy design on here, it wouldn't come right to the top here. But you may like to have um, a lower design and have more pink showing. Um, I think it would look equally as pretty. In fact, I might try that. Um, right, now to put this in place, what you need to do is put this on so you've got a very, very thin line there and a very, very thin line there. Okay, you can see how much is coming out from here and you can see how much is there. Okay, so what you need to do is... run that through. What I have here, the base under here is the new um, Big Shot platform um, and then on top I've got the precision base plate and then on top of that I have one cutting mat. Right, so I run it through once and then I bring it back through again. That's it. So what I need now is my sponge, let's put that aside for later, and I need my, um, what do we call this, dye brush. So I'm just going to run this over here. Carefully pull that off. You'll find most of the pieces are out. Anything else that's left in there, just give that a gentle push. There's a couple more there. Sometimes it's quite difficult to see these things when there's such bright lights overhead. That's okay, that's done. Now let's just get the rest of these pieces out of the way. I think that's all. Okay, so you can see the edging that I have here, how tiny this is. All right, so let me just get rid of what's on this little mat. Now we're going to do three of these getting round here. So if I put this back the way it was, the next one I'm going to line up and I'm going to do it so that here I can only see the tiniest of cardstock coming through there. In fact, I'd better bring this up to the camera because I'm not sure you can see very well from that angle. Let me just line it up first, then I'll show you. Right, okay. I oh, know that's not quite right there. Right, that's straight and that's it. Okay. I think it needs to be tilted, doesn't it? There we go. You can see what gap I've got there. Okay, the one along the edge and then the amount that I have there. So down here, hopefully, is the same as what I've got down here. So let's try and give that a go. Just line that up again because I did move it. The thing is, you do want to finish up with a little bit of a line there. Um, if you go too close, then your pattern's going, your lacy pattern's going to be broken, um, and it's not going to be broken in a way that it's going to be actually ma matching up. I don't like this when it crunches. I really don't. There we go. So that's the second one. I'll bring my mat again. Push this over and my brush. Right, 
So we lift this one up gently. <coughs> Get the rest of these pieces out of the way. Cut that a bit too fine. I'll show you in a moment, but I've actually um, broken the part that divides the two sides and it's finished up broken. Right, can you see underneath my finger there? If I'd left a bit bigger gap there, there would have been a better join. Um, but it's okay. Um, not ideal, but it will be okay. There's one there. There's a couple on the end there. There we go, that's fine. Just wipe those onto my mat and then into the bin. Now the last one, which is this way round, um, if you've the A4 size, when you put this down, I estimate you'll be okay at the end there. I don't think it's going to come right off because the that is uh, which way round is this? That is greater than the difference between the eleven the eleven point five nine and the twelve inches of the bigger piece. So I think you'll be okay. But with the American size I think you're going to fall short and I think this is going to cut up as far as about there which it's your shout you could do it like that um, and then I'll show you what would happen when we come to um, adhere it all together um, it's doable but you may not like the effect of it um, it will get covered um, which would encourage you to go ahead I think well it would me if I didn't have the 12 inch. Right, okay, so again, I've left that gap there and the same there. Let's hope that I've left a little bit more this time. And then just bring it back again. That's it. Well, that's the worst of it over. Let's pop this one here. Yes, that's a better gap. Let's see, I've got a much, much better join there. The only positive side about it is I've shown you the good way of doing it and the not so good way. Well, I'm not going to worry about cleaning my die up for the time being, I'll do that off camera. But as long as my die cut is okay, then I'll be happy. Right, so that's fine, that bit's done. So next I need to do the flowers again. They are all ready. But I just want to show you what I do. Oh, I've got to come back to that bit as well, but that's all right. Um, flowers. I'm just going to take one of these pieces. I don't have many scraps left now because I've done die cut so many of these flowers. Uh, right, what do we need? I'm using these three dies here, which are from succulents. So that's that one, that one, and that one. In fact, that's got to go on my other platform, hasn't it? So 
come back in a minute you um, and there's a bit of a push but I can do those on the other platform as well at least that way I can do them all in one go right so I'm going to get rid of this and I'm bringing in my magnetic platform and just two cutting mats and a piece of cardstock right so do these three these just cut brilliantly as normal no problems these two take a little bit more if you're using the um, magnetic platform move it over slightly right, so what I'm going to do is with this one I'm just going to take these because they will have die cut without problem but with these other two there's my scissors I want to run them both through again but I want to turn the angle round well, that hasn't even cut at all. Okay, so I'd have to do that one again, definitely. Unless I can get that fitted back on, maybe I can. Let's have a look. The other one's still holding on for dear life. Oh, that's all right. That's that's gripping. I've got these muddled up now. Which was which? I think that's that one that was quite bent. Right, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to run this backwards and forwards again. And that should be fine. Let's just check. Much, much better. But I'm not taking any chances. For these, you need to die cut five of each. That's four round, or four on, you've got one on each corner, um, each side rather, and one on the big flower at the top. Right, so that's all we need the um, big shot for. And I'm going to push these out, which come out really quite nice and easy. Okay, so that's one. Now the thing is with these flowers, to go with the little ones that I've been doing, the botanical builder things, I didn't show you that, did I? No, I didn't actually explain it, I just took them out. Um, so those two other flowers were from the botanical builder framelits. Um, I just feel that the succulents, these ones, the leafy bits or petals are too pointed to go with the rounded on these. So I round these ones off and I'm going to show you how I do that. Once they're rounded it looks as if they were made to go with each other. Oops, torn that. Good job I've already done the others. All right, pretend you didn't see that. <laughs> All right, let's do this one. Let's see if this will help this one. Should have done that to the petal one. There we go. Just comes out quite a lot easier. There we go. Right, let's move all of those there.
Right, so first of all, what I do with these is I have a three quarter of an inch punch here and a half inch punch. So starting with the biggest one, let me just show you the flowers. You see how all of these are nicely rounded? And that's what these are. This is how they started life. Now, you could just go round and cut them freehand, but what I do is each of these pointed ones I put inside a circle punch and it just comes out like that. Just so nice and easy and it's uniform as well. After a while you learn how far to put the pointed bit in there for it to come out the nicely rounded shape that you want. Okay, so for this biggest flower, I use a three quarter of an inch punch. The smallest one I know I use, there we go, the smallest one I know that I use the um, half inch. Can't think what I do with the medium one, but it looks quite, quite different, doesn't it? Um, let's do this with the half inch. This is the smallest one. Okay, now that one goes in and it's almost like you can't push it much further. I mean you could obviously but so you may find this a useful tip for when you're making other flowers. Did that one a bit too far but no petals are perfect. That's because I got some paper stuck in there. Okay, but that's fine. Now, did you go into this one? Oh, I think... Oh, this is the one that gets... Can't go any further. That's right, I remember now. That one won't go any further in the half inch. So I did it in the three quarter inch. And I just felt that I got a better curve with it. It really depends on how curvy you want yours. I mean, I'm not after perfection, I just like nice rounded ends on these. See, that one wasn't very good. But that's okay. Okay, that's not perfect, but it's okay. It's fine. Right, so, let's get these out of the way. So what I do with these ones is, with my unsharpened pencil, I just curdle all of these round. There's that one. Also curl this one, going gently with this because it will pull apart quite easily. Like that one I have already broken. But I won't be using this flower so it doesn't really matter too much. And then this one, just give it a little bit of a bend to start it going and then I pop it on my hand and just use the other end of the pencil to make it stand up nicely and then with this one I make these come forward as well a lot of hairy bits on this one right so what I do next is with Tombow I just adhere these three together and I alternate the petals okay so the petals go between the gaps on all of these and then I alternate those ones as well and then I put that one on there uh, yes I will put it on there I will take it off later I'm not quite sure how but I will take it off because I don't want to use that and then that one 
and then finally I use some Tombow and adhere one of those. As I'm sticking that down I hold it and then I bring these up and I give them a bend to make sure that they're going to stay up. Keep holding that in place, give it a chance to stick down. Okay, so you've got a nice 3D flower there. Okay, true Blue Peter fashion. This is my one. And with those two bits that I did there, these are the same. Stuck them together. When I put these on, I was pulling all these up as well, just like I did on this one, that one. Okay, so there are my flowers. Now this one, if I tried using this to cut off of here, which is what it was designed to do, the cutting edge comes right to the very end here and here, which means if you put that on there where it belongs, like that, it will cut onto that next one. You can get round that by when you put your cutting mat on, only bring your cutting mat that far and then it won't cut. But rather than doing that, the easiest way of sorting this out is just cut this by hand and it doesn't have to be absolutely perfect. As long as all your cuts are nice rounded cuts rather than pointed sharp corners, nobody will know. I just keep moving my paper as I'm going around, following the edges. I will show you my um, blue box and the pink box again, the two that I've already made and um, one of them I used the dies and the other one I did freehand like this and I really don't think you can tell the difference. But honestly, that really is perfectly okay. Right, now this one I didn't. Uh, I did use the dies on the pink one. Um, let's see which is the front of the. That's the front of the box. So that is. So those two are the same positioning on the lace. I mean, okay, it's not got such a big a gap, but that doesn't look as if it's been cut by hand. I don't think so, anyway. Hope you agree. Right, okay, so that one's okay, that's okay. Um, I'm going to put my box together. Right, so this just opens up. Let's fold on all the score lines. And then on the top as well. Fold that one over. And then that one. Okay. Now for this, what you need to do you take this one first, okay, that one, push it down inwards and then push the two side ones down and that there has got to clip underneath that straight line, like that. And then you can bring this one down and that has to slot into that. But to do that you need to push this down quite a way. 
Okay, like that. And then just give it a little bit of a push from the inside. Okay, so that's what the inside looks like. All right. If that bothered you, you can always put some, um, put a piece of pink in there or a piece of vanilla, a piece of white, whatever. Um, but I think it's okay. It doesn't worry me. Right. Now the acetate, what you need to do with that is fold the two sides that haven't been folded. They are already creased for you. Now in the catalogue, Stamping Up showed these as um, this going so that it goes over the top of the box. But I do mine so it goes in this way. And then once I've got it in, I don't move it. So make sure you've got the front of the box towards you. And then on this, there's a seam there. So I make sure that that goes at the back there. Okay, so that's at the back and I've got the front of my box here. Right, that's the seam, that's the front. And then just slide it in there. Okay, it fits like a glove. I'm picking up a lot of fluff that I've got on here. Right, so what we do now to get this around here, we have three panels. Let me bring my blue sheet back over so I can show you. Okay, so there's three panels here. This is going to be for the front of our box and we are going to eyeball what is actual the centre so that whatever gap you've got here up to that line you want the same gap on that side okay so that's the front of my box I'm going to place that on there and I'm just going to look at it and judge that gap there up to that line that vertical line oh look there's a piece of um, bit that hasn't come out. There we go. Right, okay, so that's fine. Happy with that. So what you need to do is make sure you hold that in place so it's not going to fit. Also make sure you've come down to the bottom here as well. Once you're happy that that's there, bend this over like that. Then once you're happy you've done that one, holding that very very still go along and fold this one over now you will find that you get little bits like that that actually stand up you see what that that's on my finger now that one there I think you can see that um, just make sure that that folds over it's not going to stay there but Okay, so that's all folded. Now what I'm going to do is making sure that that stays in place. Bring that one so it's underneath. And then I'm still holding this in place. Make sure that this is along the bottom still. Make sure your corner is still over the corner of the box. And then fold this over as well. Make sure you're holding this down with your other hand. Okay, like that. And then once you've done that one, hold that in place, pick this one up, turn it over, make sure you've got this straight, hold that one down, now fold this and give each little bit of cardstock you've got there a little bit of a squeeze so you get a fold. Now you remember that I said mine was broken because I went too close to the edge like that so I'm going to have to make sure I put some extra Tombow on that to hold that one down. Okay so that's what happens if you go too close. In fact that looks as if it's lost something there as well. But I'm not going to worry about that now I will go back afterwards but if I find it's something like that then again I will have to put some extra Tombow on it. So once you've done all this, if you take it away from your box and then just pinch each of your folds 
so you get a really good crease there. Make sure that that's coming straight across there as well. And do all three sides, like all three corners like that. Those and in fact there's four, you gotta do four corners. Okay, now this is the bit where if you've used the US size you're going to have missed quite a lot of off of here and you'll have a broken edge there. But we will be putting a strip over that which will cover it. Um, as I say, it's your shout, it depends on how you feel about it. It can it will be covered. Right, okay, so I've got all my folds really nicely done here now but it is going to fall short which is what that other little bit was for so what I'm going to do now is I will get my silicon mat if I can yep I got it now this is my, the front of my car uh, box rather so I'm going to put glue on this on that one there and that one there but I'm not putting anything on these end bits. It's a little bit tricky handing all of it. You may decide you want to do just that one and then move on to either side. Um, but I don't think it's too bad doing the three together. And what I do is I don't go and put glue all over it. I find however many really thick chunky bits that will take glue because what you don't want is to put your glue onto your acetate, find that you've put it in the wrong place, lift it, put it down again and see acetate, the uh, glue rather, through the lacy bits on here. Okay, so I'll show you how many places I put the glue on and I really don't put it thick either. What I do is I wait till a I've got a little bit out like that and I just spread it around. I don't keep squeezing it. But it's coming out a bit quick now. It's coming out on its own. Um, mm, 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 mm. Let me get a sheet of kitchen roll. There we go. Right, let's try again. Any areas that are really nice and big. If you find that this happens to you, you may want to do the um, blotting technique that I've shown you. Um, I will do it again because this is coming out far too quickly. Okay, so let's just put these, put the glue in the right place at least. Right, and then onto this one over here. So it's the front and the two sides next to the front that I do. I'm not worrying that to make sure that it's all at the bottom, all along the top. Thing is, as long as you've got it, um, you've got ad adhesive in sufficient places because it's wrapped round. It's not going to be going anywhere. Right, this is what I do to blot if I think my glue has come out too quickly. Okay. Now, what I do is, where's my box? Bring this back. Make sure that I've got the front of the box facing me here. And then making sure I keep these pieces away. I'm going to put it on the right way up and I'm going to make sure that the bottom line lines up at the bottom here and my centre folds, my folds rather, are going to go right on the corners there but I don't want to have to move this otherwise I'm going to finish up with glue showing through. Okay, so that one's okay. Now this one's got to be done by 
while you're holding it otherwise if you lay it down that's going to get stuck and just make sure that you've got this along the bottom it will stick over the top a little bit but that's okay now that one doesn't have any glue on so that's all right now I can lay this one down and I can bring this over okay now that's the one that I want to put a little bit more glue on it is tiny but it does need to be stuck it's too far away to think that my flower will hold it down right now I can do this one first of all I'm doing the one without the thick line on it so just find some places that have got some thick bits where you can put some glue oops I don't know what the matter is this it can't stand these things when they develop a life of their own oh, I wonder if I can do this onto tissue Yep, that looks all right. And then just make sure you come in a straight line as you come round. Okay, and then on this one, all I'm going to do is my straight line across there. I'm going to adhere that down. to let that sit upside down on my silicon sheet for a moment and I'm getting that narrow piece of cardstock that I said we needed um, that looks as if it may have gone walkabouts bear with me oh here it is okay so this is my piece this is what it yours will look like if you've used a piece of 12 inch paper It'll be wider if you've used A4 or um, the US size. Um, now I'm going to be using my Project Life corner rounder and I'm just going to round the corner at the top. I'm not doing it at the bottom. Okay, now what I've done on here I've covered that bit up to join the two bits together and this is why I say the American will work um, because this is going to cover up your cut edge um, as I say it really does depend on how you feel about that um, that didn't look like it cut too well either did it that's better right now I'm just going to put glue all over this You watch, it won't come out now. <laughs> oh dear, many true words spoken. Oops, here we go. Many true words spoken in jest. Oh, come on, come on. Don't believe it. Right, let's try another one. Well, that looks a lot better. Maybe I should have used that one right from the beginning. Right, so let's pop that up there. So just try and get that in the centre. And make sure that that looks as if it's going in a straight line as well. Okay, so I'm going to leave that for a moment. I'm going to prepare my ribbon and I am using our lacy trim, or lace trim, which is in very vanilla, and I'm also using our very vanilla um, stitched satin ribbon, and you'll need about 14 inches of this. Um, 
protein. And 14. So what I do is I just take my snail and put little bits along the satin ribbon, probably every two inches or so, just a little bit. And then I adhere this on top, make sure I've got the right side facing out. And I just make sure that those little bobbly bits at the bottom, I've got the same amount at the bottom of my ribbon all the way along. Okay, so that's that. I'm going to start adhering this around and what I'm doing is I'll find halfway just by folding that in half. Okay, so that's going to be like that. And I'm going to adhere this on using glue dots. Um, oh, here we go. So my paper piercer and that was here a moment ago oh here we go okay so with the first one I'm going to pop that what I think is the center and then I'm going to pop that on top and then I just hold that like that so that I can let that run underneath. Now this one, I'm going to put another glue, glue dot on there. Again, you can look for the center. It's about there. I'm going to put that on there. And then I'm going back round to this side. Glue dot for that one. Again, look for the centre. That's it. And now these two. I'll do one side at a time. And I like to get them both adhered onto this main piece. So I think I did that a bit too high. Oh, that was lucky. Okay, so I've got that one down. But I'm also going to put um, a glue dot on the lace as well to make sure that that stays in place. And then that little bit that's hanging over the edge I'm going to cut off. And then I'm going to do the same again for the other side. So let's have another glue dot. First of all I'm going to put one off there to hold it. Then I'm going to put one there. I've oh, got one on my finger now. That's it. I'm going to put one on there. So now I can bring this up, make sure it's all nice and straight and it lines up. And it's got three glue dots there to hold it. So I'm going to cut that end trim off. Now I'm going to put my flowers on and with these I'm going to put four glue dots on the back of each. I just pulled another one off onto my finger. There we go. Well that one looks like three will be enough. I 
Okay, three for that one as well. Sometimes it's a battle of wheels with these glue dots. They are so amazingly strong. Do one on the back, just give these a little bit of a push up. Now, obviously, I can't do this with them laying down now because I'll just flatten the flowers, so I need to do it like this. Which is okay because that uh, it means you get a good view of it as well. Okay. All right, so that's that, and my last one. I'm going to pop um, Tombow on the back of this one. There we go, that's today's project. Um, I don't know how long that took, but I imagine it's quite a long video, um, which is what my concern was. But if you're still watching with me, many thanks for joining me today, and I really hope you like this project and hope you give it a try. If you have any questions, please contact me or leave a comment in the box below. Um, my email address is jambi at jambicards.com. If you'd like to purchase any of the products that I featured here today, if you click on the show more at the uh, below the video, that'll open up a box and that will have my um, a link for my 24/7 online stamping up shop. If you've enjoyed the video, um, please click on the subscribe button and you'll be notified um, each time I make a new video, which is normally Wednesdays and Sundays. And I will put all the measurements and the products that I've used on the screen if you can't see because of the device you're watching on um, again if you click on show more I'll make sure everything in, is in the box below so many thanks for joining me today until next time happy crafting cheerio